So we are back here on the Choose 954 podcast, episode 42, with local artist, our teacher, uh, business owner, Stephanie McMillan, from her beautiful Arts and Crafts Social Club in the Hive section of Flagler Village in downtown Fort Lauderdale. If you didn't know about Shoes 954, we started the social movement to cultivate culture and community here in Broward County, where I'm from, in an effort to make this a better place to live and not just a better place to vacation. The point of the podcast is to connect you with amazing people like her who are doing the incredible creative things in the community here, which you'll find out a little bit more about. And the podcast is sponsored by the Thousand Mermaids Artificial Reef Project, creating artistically crafted artificial reef modules to help save the reefs, create ecotourism, raise awareness about the issues plaguing the ocean, and establish Fort Lauderdale as a destination for research. To find out more, you can log on to www.1000mermaids.com. But without much further ado, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself at a high level? Thanks for having me on the podcast, Devin. My pleasure. Um, what do you mean by a high level? So, artist, art teacher, what does that all kind of mean? Well, we have an art studio here um, that's like a paint and sip studio. It is a paint and sip studio. You can bring drinks and you can paint here, but it's a little more than that, I think. Um, we have a real passion for teaching art here, um, especially having people in who have never painted before. Um, we kind of feel like it's a doorway to a new form of expression, of creative expression, um, that we're very thrilled when people, you know, get something out of it and, and, and feel like they've tried something new that they might want to pursue further. Um, so we have classes, we have parties where people paint whatever they want, freestyle. We have um, black light parties where people paint under UV light um, with fluorescent paints that glow. It's really mm -hmm. fun. So it's fun as hell, but it's also very meaningful mm -hmm. to us um, because there are so many people who we see who are very self-critical and perfectionist and afraid to try new things. Um, they feel nervous, um, but if they relax and really just get familiar with the materials, um, they can really open up to something new that is uh, a really cool way to then express themselves. Um, we've had people come in recently. One woman said, um, I came in here in a really bad mood and now I feel so much better. Um, painting is very meditative. It gets you right in the moment. Um, if you can get past perfectionist tendencies and let yourself kind of play around with the materials mm -hmm. and just experiment, then um, I think that can have an effect on other areas of life. And, it can, and art is healing, Very. art is storytelling, art is communication, yes. art is history, art is so many things. Art has given me more in enrichment in my life without ever having been an artist or painting, mm -hmm. um, even though I have tried here before. Um, <laughs> But for you, how did you initially get into art in the first place? I've loved art ever since I was a kid. Um, when I was 10 years old, I wanted to be a, cartoon, a comic strip artist like Charles Schultz, who was my idol. Um, I loved Snoopy. I collected it, you know, anything that related to, the, to peanuts. And I would trace Snoopy and learn how to draw that way. And um, ever since then, that's what I really wanted to do. Um, I did become eventually an editorial cartoonist and worked in newspapers and sold to magazines um, for quite a while until newspapers kind of melted down and, and so did the profession of editorial cartoonist. Uh, so after that I did freelance stuff and have been building up a body of work of my own um, as an independent artist. But at a certain point um, my partner and I, Chris, wanted to do something together as a business. And um, the way it started was my mom had us over for a painting party and with a couple of relatives. And we had pizza and beer while we were painting. And it was so much fun in the backyard. And um, then we started talking like, well, what if we opened up a, a place where people could do that? Because it's so much fun. And that was the first time Chris had ever painted. Ever. Oh, really? Yeah. 
and he loved it and was so good at it right out of the gate. Like the first two little paintings he made were amazing. And oh, wow. so we thought, well, people sh should probably love this. And so then I did some research and I found out that painting stuff is a thing. Like I didn't even know. How long ago was this? Uh, two and a half years ago. Oh, wow. Yeah, almost three years ago. And then we started looking around for a place and found the hive, which um, has a lot of cool places. Uh, glitch bar where you can play video games and yoga studio and different places to eat. Coffee shop. In a group, yeah. yeah. And so we thought this was a good place to be for that. You know, that people might really enjoy that as part of a day's activity or an evening's entertainment. You know, come into something a little different that's not just, you know, sitting in a bar and talking, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with that, but you sure. might not want to do that every night. Um, and you might want to do something together with somebody, a friend or a date or a relative that is different. And sure. um, you get to take home a piece of art to commemorate your evening as well. And you've shared something pretty profound. It could be pretty profound. You know, sometimes people just come and have fun, which is great. Yeah. But sometimes it's more than that. And I think that one of the really cool things is you have a creative space mm -hmm. in an artist issue. Yes. Where people don't have to be artists to come create. And me not being an artist, but you know, wanting to be around a creative process, it is cool. I'm gonna spin the camera around a little bit for those that uh, are watching on the video. Why don't you tell us a little bit about what you've done to the space with some of these interior murals? over here. Oh, okay. Um, that's a mural that I did recently to in fluorescent paint so that when we do shut the regular lights off and we have the black light um, shining on it, it'll really pop and kind of show the potential of, you know, what the material can do. Wow, that's true. And this is, so this is from the floor. <laughs> and that hair dryer is there for people to dry their paintings with. <laughs> yeah, this is pretty pretty big and it really adds to the aesthetic of the space. And Chris did those flames around the door and the other mural that you're about to get to. Mm -hmm. um, for the same reason, we, we wanted people to look inside our doors and see these cool murals and maybe get inspired and think, oh, you know, I can paint something like that too. They can. And you know the other thing that I think is really cool, uh, I guess that's all the way I can spin the camera. Um, one of the other things I think is really cool is we kind of pan to, so these are some of the works that your students, participants have created. And it's, you know, it's different than, not to say that every time you see somebody go to one of the painting with the twist places that they paint Starry Night, or but generally they paint like the same thing. But here, I mean, it's some really interesting scenes what are some of the, uh, I guess, more favorite ones you've had or some of the, the cooler stories that have come out of some of your, your students' works? Well, if you go down a little bit um, to the third shelf, there's a unicorn and yeah. the space scene. Um, those are ones we developed specifically for fluorescent paints. Um, we wanted to have a body of work that's different from the norm um, in that it's I don't know. I don't want to say anything. I think those are fine. Sure. There's nothing, they're great. Um, in fact, I think we were talking earlier about how I think um, paint and sip art can be considered a new American folk art in a way, and it's pretty cool. Um, but we also wanted to have some themes that were very locally centered, you know, a, a local flora and fauna, the colors mm -hmm. of the tropics. Um, the themes of the tropics. So we have a lot of those kind of things too. And um, it also is very fitting that you are in, once again, the hive section of Flagler Village. Uh, the hive was exterior, exteriorly, if that's the word, decorated by um, two artists and entrepreneurs that uh, contributed and created and owned the being the brew coffee shop next door, uh, noteworthy muralist Herbert Galarza and uh, his cousin CV, who runs the place, and they literally well, built that place by hand 
from the counters to the tables to everything. Uh, we've done Creative Zen in there, which is something we'll talk about in a little bit. But if you've, if you've ever been here, you'll notice a lot of the pop uh, icons, music, and, and celebrities from uh, Mr. T to Marilyn Monroe to Mick Jagger. And by uh, painting these large scale exterior mur murals in the walls here in the hive section of Mass District in Flagler Village, it's really made this a, a destination. It's really made this a place where it's not that it was really blighted or dilapidated before, there just really wasn't anything here. Well, it was warehouses. Right. Yeah, I think this place was a gym right before us, but before that it was a warehouse. And um, the murals do give a cohesive feel to the place. Like you can see that all these buildings belong together because of the Correct. common themes. The, you know, the murals have a, a similar look. Yeah, and, it, and um, interestingly enough, how this all ties together, so murals and public art really add to the cultural fabric and landscape of a city. We all know the impact that murals and public art have had with places like Wynwood or you know Williamsburg and Brooklyn and Bushwick and all those places. But um, on a positive note and on an empowering note and how this all ties together with this space, uh, we have one of our most noteworthy muralists in Fort Lauderdale in Broward County Lori Pratico, who's going to be speaking at our next installment of AAF Creative Zen, our monthly breakfast lecture series, which is a mini TED talk that we host for free, speaking here next Friday, July the 12th. It always falls on the second Friday morning of the month. So we bring in a local artist, entrepreneur, thought leader, yoga zen master, somebody that has a thought-provoking, inspiring story to share with our community for free. Uh, we provide It's a free event, we provide breakfast bites and coffee, and this is an effort to connect and engage and inspire our creative community one Friday morning a month. A uh, very similar event to this is where I had my aha moment that led me into arts and culture and community building, which is part of the reason why I pay it back and pay it forward by hosting it for free. So uh, you can actually come and join us in here in the Arts and Crafts Social Club, Friday, July the 12th. The doors open at 8.30 a.m. in the morning. The talk starts at 9. You're out of here by 10. If you're worried about missing an hour of work, we have 18 things that you can tell your boss that we post on the Facebook event page on, you know, you're gonna meet uh, like-minded individuals, you're gonna network, not to, you know, get a new job, but you're gonna network with other creatives, other people in the community, you're gonna get uh, inspiration and takeaways that you could share with your team, with your company, with your friends. So it's a really great thing. You can look it up under AAF Creative Zen, sponsored by AAF, the American Advertising Federation local chapter. Um, and it's a one, one, one way we'd like you to come in here. Um, some other ways that people can come in here, um, team building event, family reunion. What are some other, other opportunities that people have uh, to come in here? We do a lot of team building events, which is pretty cool and fun. And it's something, you know, your coworkers might actually really enjoy. And um, birthday parties, bridal showers. Dates. Dates, yeah. We do um, have some paintings that are specifically geared for couples that are like two parts that right. fit together right. that are fun. And um, yeah, just friends nights out. You know, people come with their group of friends, have a few drinks, bring them, you know, you can bring your drinks yeah. here, actually. It, that's bring any kind of drink you want and um, and not just nice canvas um, I believe when Red Bull came they painted denim jackets they brought their own yeah right so they you can if you have a private group mm -hmm. party here you can choose your activity basically we'll work with you to do whatever you want so artistically shout out to Red Bull hope you guys come back um, so yeah and even I mean just think off the top of my head if somebody wanted to do like painting shoes you know, it's a creative space. They have all the materials. They, you know, all the tables are covered. They have um, obviously the sinks and everything like that. Um, they have all the brushes and everything. Yeah, so, all the materials. It includes all the materials. Yeah, so it's um, pretty much plug and play. Yeah, and if you're if you've never painted before and you come even for a freestyle session that we don't instruct, we're we're here to help and 
give you a rundown of how the paints behave and maybe a starting point that you know you can run from you know run with <laughs> yeah and <laughs> stuff is so i mean i'm such a teacher at heart so such a an easy like you know i'm not an artist so painting you know when i've tried to do it is it, it, it can be intimidating but she makes it very welcoming very inclusive for anybody Thanks. no thank you <laughs> kudos to you so um what are just in closing on that topic some other things that you would want people to think or feel and experience when they come here to arts and crafts social club one thing we don't want anyone to experience is um or feel is to be judged you know we believe that your art is an expression of you um, whether it's you know so-called skilled or not doesn't matter um it's gonna be cool just because you made it and it expresses a moment in your life and we're gonna encourage it, you to love it and we find something to love about every painting that comes that's made here and we'll help you love it too. Amen, that is absolutely beautiful. Uh, so if you haven't been here before, uh, we encourage you to look them up online. Where can they find you on social media or the interwebs? We're on Instagram, uh, mostly at Arts and Crafts Social Club, and we have a website, artsandcraftssocialclub.com, that has um, our full calendar on it for each month. Um, you can look and see what events there are and what paintings are being taught which day, and pick the one you like, and come whenever you want. Yeah, and um, if you haven't been, uh, they are in the Hive, which is part of the Fort Lauderdale Art Walk, the last Saturday night of the month. Uh, we do lead a Choose 954 guided tour, uh, which we alternate between the two arts districts every month. So this month, for July, uh, we'll be leading the tour of the Art Walk in Fat Village. Uh, they're about a 12 minute walk apart, so we do alternate them and let people leave time for them to go and explore on their own. But next month in August, we'll be back in, in the Hive in the Mass District section of Flagler Village, um, where we'll stop by here. You get to meet Steph, find out a little bit more about the space, check it out, maybe book a private class. Um, so we definitely encourage you to do that. A um, couple other things that we encourage you to check out. The always the night before, Creative Zen, which is the second Friday morning of the month, the second Thursday night of the month, our dear friend Eden Nolasco hosts Raw Storytelling, which is uh, our version of the moth, true stories uh, untold. It's, um, it's a great community building event, brings a lot of people together. You get to hear people's genuine, raw, unfiltered stories and realize that we're all very much alike. Um, so you can find out more at rawstorytelling.org. We're still glad to support our dear friends from So Far Sounds, songs from a room experience. It's a very intimate uh, music listening experience where they reward true music fans with uh, independent, up and coming, very talented musicians in very intimate settings. It's not a lot of people that are there with their phones or there for the music. You either have to request access or RSVP or be invited, they don't release the name of the venue, they just tell you what area it's gonna be in of Fort Lauderdale, and then if you're lucky enough to get granted access the day before, they tell you the location. Um, it's my, one of, it's probably my favorite music event of the month, so you can choose 954 is, is proud to continue supporting and sponsoring and getting the word out so more people can attend and take advantage of it. Um, if you have a venue that you think is cool that you'd like to host so far sounds, you can drop us a note or you can find out more at sofarsounds.com. You sign up for the newsletter, they let you know when the shows come out. It's not spammy, I promise. Um, and we're still glad to host the Choose 954 Local Artist Discovery Series. It's a live art pop-up that we do every Wednesday at YOLO, where we give a local artist a canvas, easel, table. We don't charge them, we don't take a cut of their work. We market it, we make a flyer, we give them the food tab, we do social media for them. And it's in an effort to connect local artists with the downtown YOLO crowd uh, to hopefully help them get followed, collected, supported, however that may be. Um, we're on our 123rd consecutive week. 
and we hope to do it for another 123 consecutive weeks because there's no shortage of artists that deserve the opportunity. So if you're a local artist, if you know a local artist, maybe they've never done a, a live event before, maybe they've never done any event before, maybe they're looking for the next event, feel free to reach out uh, at Choose954. There's no minimum or maximum requirement or skill set. I'm glad to support artists of any caliber and level. Um, and it's, it's been a really great thing in terms of getting artists you know, collected and, and supported and followed. Um, I'm Evan Snow. You can find me on Instagram at evansnow13, at choose954, at a thousand mermaids, at zero empty spaces, at all those other great things that we're doing to support the arts. And anything else? Uh, no, thank you for having me on your podcast. Um, thank you very much. I'm really looking forward to having you guys join us. Friday, July 12th, I've heard Lori Pradico share her story before. It is absolutely phenomenal. Bring some tissues. Uh, her Girl Notice uh, initiative is absolutely phenomenal, how she's empowering women uh, through the arts. And um, yeah, we look forward to seeing you then. Save the resale.